Hello, my name is Rafael Gutierrez, and today I'm going to actually give you some information. Uh, one of the things that happened is I found out I was wrong on something, and so I'm going to call it. Now, for me, I'm actually excited about this and actually happy that I found something which I was wrong about. Not because I'm not wrong, actually, I'm wrong um, about a lot of things. But the reason I act is that whenever I actually do something, whenever I'm looking at something, a lot of times we tend to see things and we interpret what we believe rather than what is. What I mean by that is this. A lot of times we can we look at stuff and if we look at data and we, a lot of times, I mean, this actually happens in research and everything. A lot of times people get rid of data points which don't match what they were actually finding. And so for me, when we actually look at all the data points and we find something different, we act, it, in science, we should be reevaluating what we do. And that's one of the things that's important in martial arts is a lot of times we get stuck on that. Well, no, this is the way it is because it's the way I was taught. And a lot of times that really makes our martial art weaker. It doesn't make it stronger. It makes us pretty much thick-headed and stubborn, but our martial arts suffer from it. And so as I found one thing that I was talking about was wrong, I figured I would mention it here. Uh, and that is about the one-inch punch. A lot of times I actually tell people, well, look, I don't know how much force you can actually develop in a one-inch punch. It doesn't, it's, well, you can develop the force. It may not be at a burst that would actually cause damage. And what I found is the peak force of a one-inch punch could actually be enough to uh, produce damage. Now, there are some people who tell me, well, my technique with a one-inch punch isn't proper. But the thing is, if I'm getting numbers that would cause fractures or damage to the body, that's all I'm interested in. I don't care if it's a perfect technique. It's does it cause damage? I will work on perfect technique. I will work to perfect my technique using my own stuff, my own martial art. And I do think that the uh, one-inch punch and technique is important. But when people are telling you, well, you know, your technique is off, and they themselves are not showing you what the technique is, well, you know, it doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, all that means, the only thing that means anything is numbers. And I know that that is something that is a little uh, difficult for some people to understand because they're used to arguing about opinion. Opinions really don't matter. It's the numbers that matter. Uh, unless you have the opinion of a world-renowned uh, thoracic surgeon who can actually tell you specifically what he's seen, most, people, most people's opinions are just that, their opinions. They're weak. They don't have any function uh, in martial arts. Like I said, if it's your teacher's opinion, well, that may be a little more powerful to you, but remember that if something disagrees with it, if facts, if numbers disagree with it, you have to look at what the numbers say, not what you want to believe. Now, I am going to do that on the Makiwara here. You can see part of it. I already have part of it set up. But the other thing I wanted to actually mention is something that someone had mentioned, uh, actually me and a friend were talking about earlier, and that is how Okinawan Karate will be affected by Karate being in the Olympics in Tokyo. And there are a lot of different views of this. There are some people who say, well, look, it may give a false view of what Okinawan Karate is because they're dealing with the uh, styles from mainland Japan mostly, and they're done in a tournament setting rather than the way they were done in Okinawa. And what I mean by that is if you look at the old pictures of Karateka, they don't do karate the way they're doing done today in tournaments. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that that's it, that that is what is happening. Now, there are a couple different ways some people will actually talk about this. One of them is, well, people get a bad view of what karate is. They won't know what pre real looking out karate is, and they'll go that way. And what the argument I would actually say is we already have that happening. I mean, there's a lot of martial arts that claim to be the traditional looking out karate, and they can sell it to anyone, and it doesn't have to even have any roots with Okinawa. It's just someone saying what it is because that's what they want to sell. Now, there's another thing that can happen. As these, the tournament karate starts being introduced, it will, there will be people who will end up seeing this and think, well, what did the original or the older versions of the karate actually look like? Well, how is it done in Okinawa? And that might be something that would actually bring people, if not to train in Okinawan Karate uh, directly, they may actually go to seminars of Okinawan Karate to see how it is how it is, and why. And so one of the things is it does, for me, the way I'm looking at it right now is 
it's potentially helpful for everyone. Right? You know, it can promote Okinawa as the birthplace of karate, which has been something that Okinawa has been do, trying to do for a while, and this could help it. And it could actually, like I said, you have the tournament karate, and when people want to see what the old, older versions of karate, they can make a plan to go to Okinawa and see how Okinawans did their karate. Now, I know there's a, every, a lot of people who know, no, we have the original version. Truth is, you know, chances every karate has changed, and so it's just a variation. As we are seeing more of the older practitioners in Okinawa uh, for a longer period of time, then, you know, we will actually have less influence from outside. But, <coughs> but with that said, excuse me, I'm going to show you what I mean about the one-inch punch. Now, again, I am using the uh, uh, pressure scale uh, strip from Fuji Films. I really enjoy, I've actually enjoyed this. I've had one sheet and I still haven't even gotten to half of it. And I've been using it for a lot of things. I really recommend if you are serious about researching your own martial arts, that you use it, see what techniques work for you and what techniques don't. Uh, this way you can actually get numbers yourselves rather than relying on someone like me who no, you don't know anything about me, really. I mean, I know, yes, you know, I'm a professor, but I could be, you know, making up my own stuff. I could be using different films than, than what I'm claiming. If you actually use the film, you'll realize that I'm not. But I could. And so I actually leave it at that. And I'm going to move this over so you can see the Makiwara a little better. Uh, so the One Inch Punch was made famous by Bruce Lee. It was when you come here, you punch and you roll in. And when I've seen him do it, it flicks upward here. I don't like using flick, the flick upward here because the bones here tend to break more off. These two, in particular, here, tend to break more often than any other than the others. Um, it's about 10% here, 10% this one, 10% the base here, but that's usually when it catches here and gets pushed back. Uh, the fracture of here from a compress is when I actually did look at the study, which you can go on my website and have the access to the uh, article I wrote. It did say very rare. Uh, I don't have the references on that, but I can give it to you if you guys want. I can find it on my uh, my websites if you uh, are so interested. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I mean by the one-inch punch. Now, sometimes I've noticed that when I punch, it doesn't necessarily read right away, but it doesn't matter because all of this, this is going to do is measure the maximum amount of force that is applied to it. It doesn't really matter how long or how pretty much how long, especially as you do have different different settings on here. Uh, I Like I always say, I'm not really too interested in the numbers as much as is the intensity the same. Uh, I will give you the numbers because I can, uh, but that's something for you guys to uh, look at. And so I'm going to stand up and punch this, then I'm going to pause it so I can read the numbers. Yeah, not read the numbers, but do all the calculations. Hold on a second. So, as I said, I already have the strip set up here, and all I'm going to do is come in with the straight punch. Now, uh, one of the things I found interesting is uh, Popular Mechanics on their website has all the explanation of Bruce Lee's punch. It's actually great to read because he, it talks about how the, he was using the legs to launch through. And he also had a wit, uh, flip in the uh, wrist to get uh, actually more power. And so here, I'll try and I'll probably do it two times because I've noticed that a lot of times I miss it one time. So one, two, three. And I turned it on the side a little. So actually, it's a pretty good hit, but I'll try it again. One, two, three. And there we go. Now, like I said, it's not that important how much, but you can actually see the intensity here. Uh, you can see that where it's actually going is where the uh, wrists are. You didn't hear a big hit like normal, but this is actually a one. This is a, a sudden thing, a sudden impact. That's all it is. Maybe I don't know why it didn't sound as hard. And I did have, I will be honest, I have hurt myself uh, in the past. So I'll pause it while I actually do this. And so when I um, actually measured it and uh, looked at the numbers, it did again come out to uh, over a thousand. Uh, PSIs, which is pretty consistent of where I'm actually hitting on a regular basis. Uh, and so what it's telling me is it's actually can get, you can get the force. Now I will tell you, I did do a test where I actually just pushed my knuckles in 
and I didn't get much of a change on the uh, pressure. I will try it again yeah, so you can see what I'm talking about. So here I have a new piece. So what I'm saying is if I, instead of hitting, if I come here, put my hand here and push, In and out. Didn't get any. Well, that one didn't actually even get anything. It just didn't even change the color. So let me try again. Three times. So here. So if I'm pushing rather than punching, you get a little bit, but it's not going to be the force that you would under normal conditions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, if you're one of the people who does a one-inch punch and saw my explanation of one-inch punch and my uh, incorrect assessment as it wasn't really valuable for uh, self-defense as it didn't produce as much force, and uh, I hope you feel vindicated and can say, yes, I was wrong. I, I gladly admit that I was wrong because this actually gives me one more one more technique that I could use in my arsenal. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and have a good day. If you do enjoy this, please consider uh, looking at some of my books. They are available on Amazon. Thank you. Goodbye.